continuing on our discussion of hormones and the endocrine system, endocrine system. This is for my students, chapter 40, and this is part two, specifically in the notes that you find down in the descriptor. Um, we are on, in the notes, 40.2, hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. If you missed um, the, par the or part one video, I recommend that you go and look at that. We have already discussed the overview of hormones and how they function. And right now we're gonna focus on specific um, glands and how they operate. So I'm gonna jump right into here. So I did that in a, in a two-parter earlier. So let me go into the presentation mode. Okay, and the first one, let me get rid of all of this. The first one I want us to talk about right here. Oh, know thy glands and hormones. Okay, the first one I wanna talk about, and this is like the hallmark example, all right, is how the hypothalamus, which is 100% nervous system, engages with your pituitary gland, and how those two, the nervous system and the endocrine system, work together to maintain homeostasis in your body. So first of all, I need to preface by saying your pituitary gland, um, during development, um, the posterior pituitary drops down out of the hypothalamus. And so you have a direct connection, if you can see the same you know, color tissue over here, between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary actually grows up and out of the mouth region and then grabs on here to the stalk. So the way the hypothalamus controls the two parts of the pituitary gland are vastly different. Okay, and then if you remember in part one when I talked about those neurosecretory cells that are like a neuron in how they work, but also like an endocrine cell and how they secrete hormones. So those are the type of cells we're working with here. And from your hypothalamus, you have neurosecretory cells that go directly and can reach all the way into the posterior pituitary because it descended out of it, right? It's continuous with it. However, with the anterior pituitary, because the anterior pituitary grabbed on a little bit later in development, as far as those neurosecretory cells can reach is as far as the stalk. And what they do is they put releasing hormones into the stalk right here, the connector into those capillaries. And then those releasing hormones travel via the blood to the capillaries, a second set of capillaries located in the anterior pituitary. And those releasing hormones put those hormones um, into the cells of the anterior pituitary. Then the anterior pituitary will um, then secrete stimulating hormones that are carried via the blood to the rest of the body. So there are only three places in your body. Um, let me make myself big here for a minute. Normally what happens when your heart pumps for your systemic circulation, then the blood's gonna flow out um, arteries, arterioles, and capillaries around some tissue where you have exchange of nutrients, signals, and waste. And then it comes back in venules and veins to your heart. It goes and it's part of your pulmonary circuit out to your lungs, then comes back to your heart and out to your systemic circuit. So normally it's just one capillary bed, but there are three places in your body where it has double capillaries. And this is one of those three places where you have double capillaries. So, so for reference, okay, um, you have double capillaries in your kidney, um, you have double capillaries when in your part of your digestive system with your hepatic portal vein linking your intestines to your liver. Okay, put a pen in that. Um, this set of double capillaries is, is great because even though the anterior pituitary is at a distance from the hypothalamus, that it can still get the anterior pituitary to respond very rapidly because of the double capillaries, all right? So let me make myself smaller again. So on your notes, there we go. Okay, on your notes, go to the introduction, and the notes are down in the descriptors in 40.2. The hypothalamus helps regulate the internal environment through the autonomic nervous system, autonomic nervous system, and the glandular secretions of the pituitary gland. 
through the autonomic nervous system and the glandular secretions of the pituitary gland. Now, just for quick, your nervous system, you have autonomic and somatic. Autonomic, think automatic, like you don't have to think about it, like you don't have to think about breathing, you don't have to think about the aspects of digestion, it happens automatically for it. Somatic nervous system is about choice or reflexes, all right? So the pituitary is identified as the master gland. The pituitary is identified as the master gland because it controls so many other glandular secretions. And then you can see in your notes as well, the pituitary has two portions and each is controlled differently by the hypothalamus. The posterior pituitary, the control is direct. It is direct, okay? And, um, and I gave you the rest of that. The, the hypothalamus has neurosecretory cells that extend into the posterior pituitary. And there are two hormones. Now, the hypothalamus actually makes these hormones and secretes them into the posterior pituitary who stores those hormones. And those two hormones will be released from the posterior pituitary through nervous stimulus from the hypothalamus. So it's kind of a two-parter on that, but those two hormones are oxytocin and ADH. And oxytocin, we learned about in part one, that has to do with uterine contractions, so uter uterine contractions for the baby to come out. And remember when the baby comes out, you're gonna need to feed it. So it's great that this also triggers milk release to come out of the mammary glands. So uterine contractions for the baby out and milk release um, out of the mammary glands. And then the second hormone by the posterior pituitary is ADH. That stands for antidiuretic hormone. And it has to do with water balance in your kidneys. But for your notes right now, I just want you to put controls the kidneys causing water reabsorption. Controls the kidneys causing water reabsorption. Now, the anterior pituitary, like I said, this is a different form of control. It secretes releasing hormones right here into the stalk, which travel via the blood to the anterior pituitary, and those releasing hormones will trigger what hormones are released by the anterior pituitary. So on your notes, um, the control is indirectly through two sets of capillaries, indirectly through two sets of capillaries, the first set extending into the stalk, and you wanna put releasing hormones are put into the stalk. The second set in the anterior pituitary, where the releasing hormones from the hypothalamus trigger stimulating hormones, so stimulating hormones come out of the anterior pituitary, and I have a list of those stimulating hormones. So let's take a look at this next picture. Let me put myself over here. All right, so take a look here. Um, I've identified the hormones here, but from your posterior pituitary, you can see right here, these neurosecretory cells, those extend directly into the posterior pituitary, and those neurosecretory cells put these two hormones, oxytocin and ADH, into the posterior pituitary, and if neurons stimulate the release, they will release these hormones. Here you can see antidiuretic hormone impacting the kidney, okay? And then you can see here oxytocin affecting the breast with milk release and the uterus with contraction. Now, the anterior pituitary, if you follow this down, it puts re uh, releasing hormones into the stalk, which travel via the blood, and then those releasing hormones will trigger right here, all of these stimulating hormones. And look at all these items that they stimulate. That's why collectively the pituitary gland is called the master gland. But I also want you to see, this is a great example in cell signaling and also negative feedback. Because as these hormones increase from these different glands and tissues, right? then this will go back and provide negative feedback, um, or I'll give you some examples of also positive feedback, um, on both the hypothalamus and on the pituitary gland. Now, um, this whole uh, hormone discussion is an illustrative example of cell signaling and feedback loops in order to maintain homeostasis in our body. So I am not, other than the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the pancreas, I'm not, 
in the thyroid gland. I'm not holding you liable for all the glands and hormones in your body, but I definitely want to show them as examples in case they give you that as an example on your AP exam. So underneath your hormones on your notes for the anterior pituitary, I want you to see that thyroid stimulating hormone coming from your anterior pituitary will, will trigger your thyroid gland to secrete its thyroid hormones. So on your notes, TSH stimulates the thyroid gland. Um, adrenal corticotropic hormone right here will affect the adrenal cortex. So ACTH stimulates the adrenal gland, specifically the cortex. All right, prolactin. Um, prolactin, you can see right here, also affecting the breast tissue. But what this does is it gets you to make the milk, okay? And contrast that with oxytocin, where it gets the milk to come out of the breast tissue. So prolactin, I always think like prolactose, it's getting that milk made. So prolactin stimulates mammary glands to encourage milk production. Um, growth hormone, you can see here, it's going to affect two targets here, both your muscle and your bone um, to grow. So growth hormone stimulates bones and muscles. And then FSH and LH, this stands for follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. These are going to affect here the ovaries, but also it affects testes in the hormones they secrete. So it stimulates the ovaries and the testes. Now, in your notes, I have given you the rest of the notes. They are filled in. If you if you look through your notes, I am just going to point out a few target um, tissues that I want you to be aware of. So you don't have to worry about filling out your notes anymore, but um, just answer a few questions as we go through here. I want you to see the connection between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and your thyroid gland. This is often used as an illustrative example, and it has to do with feedback. Again, negative and positive feedback loops. So here you can see you get a releasing hormone, and here let me actually give you the hormones, okay? So you get a releasing hormone from your hypothalamus, thyroid releasing hormone. This is going to trigger the anterior pituitary to secrete a thyroid stimulating hormone, which then tells the thyroid gland, hey, do your job and start secreting thyroid hormone. As the thyroid hormone level increases, this would then be negative feedback on both your hypothalamus and your pituitary saying, hey, it's enough. Remember, this would be like turning on your oven to 375. And when the oven gets hot enough, it will turn the oven off so it doesn't continue to heat it up and burn your cookies, right? So this is an example of a feedback loop. Now, um, this is the knowledge is power. The falling glands and hormones are just more examples, but I'm gonna hit a few of those with you right here. Um, here you can see, we've heard about type one and type two diabetes with your uh, pancreas and issues with whether or not your cells are responding to the sugar level. Um, type one is uh, you're born that way. Um, type two maturity onset is usually a factor of your weight and maybe um, overconsumption of sugars. Here's another type of diabetes, um, diabetes insipidus, where you don't make enough ADH that we are talking about um, earlier from the pituitary gland. And as a result, you, um, you urinate too much and you have loss of water. So that is another form of diabetes. Um, uh, you can see issues here with growth hormones. Um, acromegaly, you can see this in your notes about continuing to grow even as an adult. Um, there are different, I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through these. You can feel free to look at them if you like, but I wanted to give you an example on your thyroid gland. You have a couple of thyroid hormones, but also you have your parathyroid gland on top. These secrete um, contrary hormones to each other. Again, I'm going really fast here, and this would be another example of homeostasis. Um, this one I wanted to point out to you, um, this is goiter. And what's happening here is, remember I told you the hypothalamus triggers the pituitary and the pituitary gland triggers your thyroid gland. Well, in, in order to make your thyroid hormones, you need iodine to make those thyroid hormones. And when people do not have a diet that has an influx of iodine, 
the hypothalamus really yells at the pituitary and the pituitary really yells at the thyroid gland, make thyroid hormone, but it doesn't have the ability to do it because it doesn't have a source of iodine. So what happens as a result is this overstimulus of the thyroid gland and its inability to generate that, it starts to swell the thyroid gland. And this is what a goiter is. All right, and then here's some other examples of goiter. This is easily solved by having iodine in your diet, which is why we have iodized salt. All right, and there are other diseases that can come as a result of hyposecretion, or in this case, this is hypersecretion of your thyroid gland. You can have Graves' disease. Um, this is one I wanted to point out to you about how we maintain homeostasis from your adrenal medulla this is your epinephrine and norepinephrine about fight or flight whereas your adrenal cortex is more about your sustained response to stress so the example i use for this is your adrenal medulla is like when you have a quiz or a test and you're under the stress of that moment whereas your adrenal cortex is the stress of an entire semester all right, again, uh, comparing and contrasting your endocrine system with your nervous system. Remember your nervous system is a lot faster. So here you can see your hypothalamus, you have neurons that are impacting specifically the re release of epinephrine and norepinephrine from your adrenal medulla. But also if you look right here, you have neurosecretory cells, right? Remember when we talked about the first set of capillaries here in your stock and the second set of capillaries here in your anterior pituitary, they can secrete adrenal corticotropic hormone, which is going to affect your adrenal cortex. And again, just comparing and contrasting that. Now, I have the rest of the slides available to you um, and you can look through those. You have the rest of the notes that you might wanna take a look at on that. But the critical part that I needed you to absorb from this short part two video was the functioning of feedback and the connection between the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands. Um, and then just a few illustrative examples to show you that. So this one is a little bit short, but those other um, resources are available um, to you as well. Okay, that's it.